It's time for the Financial Crisis Talk Center with Ken Gross and David Einstein from Fav Gross. Credit card debt is number one. I think it, I view it as financial cancer. Forty percent of your gross income is going to just pay the debt service. You got no chance to get now. I would give up my credit score to get rid of debt. Here's your host, Ken Gross. Hi, welcome back. All right, so here we are, Financial Crisis Talk Center. Uh, the word of the day from here on out for this segment and the next segment is money. 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 I want money, some. Money, money, money. You want some. Okay. I need some. Everybody needs some. We money. spend some. All right. Is this a soliloquy or what, else? what comes next? And then it's gone. Okay. Oh, I like that. You did have a. You, did you just think of that or had you. No, I had thought that? of that. Okay. That's good. All right. Here's what's gonna. Here, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do two segments. This segment and the next, and we're gonna do a wrap up of the financial crisis talk center because we're moving into a new era. We're moving the show to a new format and a new name. It is gonna be Law and Reality. It's gonna start on the radio on September 6th. On the television version of the show, will start on September 14th. Instead of calling it the financial crisis talk center. It's going to be known as Law and Reality. We're still going to cover financial issues, but we're going to broaden the scope and the spectrum of what we're talking about, always from a reality standpoint. I think that the whole concept of financial crisis management was reality-driven from the standpoint of coming up with real solutions to problems. And I think whenever you look at a legal issue, you need to look at it from a reality perspective. Otherwise, it's just a theoretical discussion which is nice to debate and have banter about, but it doesn't create any meaningful use. That's what happens in law school. After that, you get out, and it's reality. Yeah, and you get, and you get solving. Solving people's problems is the reality of practicing law. So what we're going to do in the next two segments is we're going to try and identify the things we've learned in 301 seg, uh, shows on the radio show. This show's been airing since November of 2008. I may have missed because I think we were, I think we were off, well, we were off last week, so make that 300 shows. Uh, and I think we skipped two other shows maybe for, uh, uh, for, for a holiday that, that, that came up. But basically, we've been here for 300 shows, and we've, we've ident identified some rules, and we've learned some lessons. So I don't want to do a case study. Instead, I want to revisit things that we learned about. And the first one is the old rules do not apply. And what the old rule was, was work hard, pay your bills on time, be a good citizen, and the world will treat you fair. And I think the best way of illustrating that rule was given to us this week by Bank of America because they concluded the settlement although it hasn't been inked, but the deal's been made with the U.S. government. Bank of America has agreed to pay $16.65 billion in cash and consumer aid for its role in defrauding its customers and its investors in the mortgage crisis and being a major contributor to doing everything possible to driving this economy into the ground and destroying our country. They didn't succeed, but they were a threat and they caused a lot of harm and a lot of grief to a lot of people. And they did it because they were based upon fraudulent conduct. It's, it, it, it's pathetic. It's a lot of silver toasters. $9.65 billion in cash, $7 billion in consumer aid. Now, Bank of America is just one player. We've talked about Chase got hammered, Citibank, Morgan Stanley. You'll see, I'm gonna, I'll mention in a second, uh, Goldman Sachs just entered into a settlement with uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac for $1.2 billion. The total number as of now, according to the last article I found, because I think they might be missing a few settlements, is $74.58 billion in settlements. Bank of America has 19 settlements. J.P. Morgan Chase, 8. Citibank, 8. Wells Fargo, 9. Morgan Stanley, two, 4. Goldman Sachs, 2. 
$74.58 billion. That's by Bank of America. No, that's all everybody. No, Bank of America's total. Uh, I wonder if you're right on that. I think it's. I think the article is, is is showing that it's actually about 127 billion to settle all these cases. I think you're right. I and think you're right. and Bank of America got hammered 19 different settlements, and there's still other lawsuits hanging out out there. Was it where they were part of the 25 billion dollar settlement? All right, I'm not gonna hang up with the numbers because my numbers are gonna get skewed a little bit when and they're when we play huge. Some games that, it doesn't matter. It's a right. huge number, and people, you know, the the interesting thing is is that the numbers are so big that I think that the American public has become jaded to the concept. Oh, they just got hit with $17 billion in fa fines and penalties. And, and yes, it's going to help fix the problem, but it's a nothing. He's, oh, well, $17 that's, billion, dollars. That's who cares? That's what's amazing is that they can pay out these type of settlements and still continue. Yeah, and when we get to it in a second, I want to kind of put those numbers in perspective, too, because the, num the numbers are really mind-boggling, and we're so used to them that we don't, we don't think anything, uh, we don't think much of it. But here's, here's a couple of things that the Justice Department said in, in Eric Holder when making his statements and announcements of the settlement. Lenders knowingly providing credit to borrowers who couldn't afford loans and selling those mortgages to unwitting investors. Borrowers ultimately defaulted, sending them into foreclosure and settling investors with heavy losses. They knew this all along. The simple reason is that when the loan resets in five years, there will be enormous payment shock and the borrower is not sufficiently sophisticated to truly understand the consequences. Then the bank will be dealing with foreclosure and potentially a deflated real estate market. This would be both a financial and reputa reputational catastrophe. This is what... Mazzillo, he was the, uh, Anthony Mazzillo was the head of Bank of America at the time. This was a note that he wrote. They knew this was going to happen, and they kept it quiet. Well, what really amazed me in the article was that he knew in August of 2005 that there was going to be a collapse of the real estate market, at least in the condominium market in Florida and Las Vegas. And that was a key growth component at that time in the real estate market, and all of a sudden he's going to say he knows it's going to go, really? I mean, well, the reason, well, you, and, and you keep in mind, you don't go and agree to a $16.65 billion settlement unless the other side has some pretty good hard evidence against you. So there's you know, emails, there's documents, there's all this stuff out there. But now let's, let's shift for a second. What does this mean? What does it say to us? Well, there's two things here. One is opportunity. Seven billion of this settlement is going to be in consumer relief, which means there's going to be money available for principal reduction on mortgages and modifications. It's going to be easier to short sell properties if Bank of America is your lender. That's opportunity. We saw this happen once before with the national mortgage settlement. That was the 25 billion settlement. We'll talk about it as soon as we get back. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke, and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. You like your job. What you don't like is the way your boss has been treating you. He's making comments about how you look instead of your work, and he's been touching you inappropriately. If you complain, is he allowed to fire you? Absolutely not. Unwelcome sexual comments, advances in contact are illegal in the workplace. Make him pay. Gold Star Law is here to help you through your employment law problem, whatever it is. Gold Star Law, protecting employees' rights. Call 1-800-WAGES-10 for a free consultation today. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Every family has the family meeting, and we all know what that means. Dad's got dementia. What are we going to do? What's the care plan that the family has in place? Usually they don't, 
or they struggle with a care plan. When you go home tonight and you talk to your tax person and you talk to your financial person and say, what's the plan that you have in place? And as soon as they don't give you an answer, give me a call because I can do it for you. Change is good. The Financial Crisis Talk Center is shifting to law and reality. Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. beginning September 14th, Law and Reality will cover financial issues and all legal issues. We're going to tackle what you need to know. All right, welcome back. All right, so what does this mean with the Bank of America settlement? First of all, there's opportunity here. In the National Mortgage Settlement, which came out in 2012, there was $25 billion in relief most of which was in soft money, which was in the form of loan modification assistance, short sale relief, principal reductions. Bank of America, in that settlement, absorbed most of the $25 billion. When that happened, we saw for a period of one year some great loan modifications, and they became much easier to get approved, and they included principal reduction. Why did that happen? You, gotta, you, you learn from these things. In the, in the national mortgage settlement, the lenders were incentivized. They were given a dollar and a quarter for every dollar that they settled if they did it in the first year and a half. And if they didn't get it done in three years, they got penalized. All the lenders covered all their obligations in the first year and a half, so they got the benefit of the incentive. Hey, I think you used that word earlier in the first Which episode word? to describe the, the lenders. Get, it started get, get with a with P it, and ended with an E. Well, I, 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 okay, <laughs> All right, maybe, but if you were watching, if if you're watching the TV version, you don't even know what we were talking about in the first segment. That's right. And we're not going to tell. And you, so you'll have to get the podcast. Now, are these dollars when you're talking about the the seven billion that's set aside that's going to come along with the loan modifications? Now, are those dollars the banks have really already written off in their minds? In, in so, they they're gaining benefits of it because in, in some circumstance, yes, I think that was more true uh, back in 2012 when they had already written off all these uh, these loans. But yeah, if they've already written off, if a loan is eight months in default, they've probably already taken the loss written off, and, and written off yeah. the uh, the shortfall. And when they give the relief, it's not really costing the market, them anything from, from the that market. The market already absorbed it because Bank of America's stock was up. Yeah, but I, I, I want to get back to, to, to the more important point is, is, is this, is that we saw the significance on the consumer end. It became easier to get a loan modification and it became possible to get principal reduction. What this says to me is opportunity. If you lender is Bank of America and you have your mortgage with them, when this settlement gets approved, they're going to have to give away this $7 billion worth of relief because they're going to be monitored and they're going to be reviewed and they're going to give it away quickly. So if your situation is such that you've got that you're close to underwater, you don't have a lot of equity, you have a Bank of America mortgage, you should come in and we should look at it and review it because there's going to be opportunity to take advantage of getting a piece of that $7 billion. It's just the way it's going to work. Is it rational? Not necessarily. Is it fair if you're not Bank of America? No, it's not fair, but this is not a fair world. The rules of the game have changed. What's the other lesson to be learned? The other lesson to be learned is these people are thieves. $127 billion have been paid in settlements by these lenders over the last four, four years. What does that tell you? What does that say to you? The banking industry is ripping off the America. And they've been hammered and they've been punished and they're paying settlements and if they're paying settlements of $127 billion, how much have they really stolen from everybody? They're, they're still profit-worthy, so to speak. They, they, the banks, this doesn't hurt the banks. It doesn't hurt anybody. It isn't hurting the, the uh, shareholders. It isn't hurting the presidents of the bank. Nobody's going to jail. There's no magically... People aren't uh, the the presidents of the banks and the CEOs. They're not losing their paychecks. Right. They're they're basically going. Eh, who if, cares? If, it's just the American if, public. If you or me or anyone did this on a small level, we would go to jail. But when you have the benefit of being too big to fail, and you're an executive, 
your company ends up paying out $127 billion worth of penalties, and you get to keep your job, and you get to make millions of dollars. There's, it's not fair. It's not right. But the lesson to be learned is this is reality. This is how it is. What it says to me is if that's how they're going to treat you, then when a client comes into me and says, well, you know, I feel really bad about, you know, get, not paying back my bills, uh, I, would re- I think I should take out the money from my 401K and my IRA and pay them what I owe. And I, would, I sit there and say to him, I don't think so. I think you should leave the money in your 401K and your IRA, and you should pay them as little as you possibly can because you should do unto others as they do to you. And what they have done to us is not fair, is not right. They've committed fraud. They've cheated us over the they, – they've ripped us off, and they've gotten away with it. And this is just a little bit of what Brian calls leveling the playing field. Yeah, you now, how get much even. is a billion dollars? That's what I what we were talking about. Apparently, the not much. There was a good. There was. A, I, I went online, uh, found a site, The View from the Meadow, and it had a few things to put it in perspectives. Uh, to uh, a billion is a thousand million. A billion seconds ago was 1959. Humans first learned to write 252 billion seconds ago. A billion minutes ago, Jesus was alive. A billion hours ago. Our ancestors were living in the Stone Age. A billion dollars was uh, was eight hours and twenty minutes at the rate Washington spends it, but that was like eight years ago. Now it's uh, it's it spends it at a lot faster rate. How much is a trillion dollars? That's even more incomprehensible. One trillion seconds equals one thousand six hundred and eighty-eight years. The oldest human alive. The oldest known human was alive 110 trillion seconds ago. Now, our U.S. national debt, the outstanding national debt as of August 22nd at 1147 last night was 17 trillion 711 billion 882 million 674 thousand 562 dollars and 17 cents. Now, if you take Bank of America's 16.65 billion dollar settlement. And divide that by 318,867,000 Americans. That's fifty-two dollars per American. If you take the hundred and twenty-seven hmm, billion, the checks in the mail, versus the sixteen billion, that's going to be about two hundred and it's going to be about two hundred and sixty, two hundred and seventy dollars per American in settlements paid out by the banking industry. That's that's crazy. So to me, the rule learned is. Don't get mad anymore. Get even. And the goal is preserve future income for you and your family. That's what we've learned from the financial crisis. Now, the beauty of that is is that while the banks did it illegally and they got caught and they're paying for it, there are a whole bunch of legal opportunities to get yourself out of debt, doing it fairly, without fraud, and ethically, and profitably. Absolutely. Point, point well made. I mean, so the rule is, besides the old rules don't apply, the mantra for us in financial crisis management is preserve future income for you and your family. And then the question is, how do you get there? Shedding debt in the least costly, most effective manner is the first key. Then you have to start saving the money. We'll be back after the break. Are you struggling to pay your mortgage? Afraid of foreclosure and the financial mess it can cause? Time is not on your side. Call Alan Stalter, the short sale specialist. For years, Alan has been helping distressed homeowners navigate through the short sale process. His experience will get you out of your home without the credit score damage that follows foreclosure. If you want a fresh start, you need to call Alan Stalter, the short sale specialist, 248-854-3829 or MetroDetroitShortSale.com. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. 
Going from hourly to salary seemed like a good career move, but now you're working 60 hours a week instead of 40, and you aren't getting paid any of that extra time. You're stuck, right? Wrong. You can be on salary and still be entitled to overtime. If you've been wrongly denied such pay, you may be entitled to that and more. Gold Star Law is here to help you through your employment law problem, whatever it is. Gold Star Law, protecting employees' rights. Call 1-800-WAGES-10 for a free consultation today. All right, welcome back. I, 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 I clocked the numbers on $127 billion divided by the number of Americans. That would be $396 per person. That's a lot of money. I mean, that's, uh, it, it, it's crazy. So the goal is preserve future income for you and your family. Shedding debt is the key. What have we learned from big business? We've learned from GM, Chrysler, American Airlines. What, that's what they did. You take your good assets and you go move forward. You get rid of your debt. Out goes the bad. You keep the good. All right, let me do a couple of quick announcements, uh, and, and then, then we'll come back. We've already mentioned, obviously, the show switching to law and reality. You know, watch for that. Uh, September 14th is the, is the start date on TV, September 6th on, on the radio. Uh, if you're struggling with your house and you're worried about foreclosure or you want to know what your remedies are, we have a free report called Reg X, The Hidden Secrets. To get that, go online, put in regxhomesaver.com, and we email you a PDF of the, of the free report. It's a 12-page report. Plain English kind of lays out what your what, what your rights are. We have a seminar coming up September 10th. Get serious about debt elimination. It's at our offices in Bingham Farms from 7 to 8.30. To sign up for it, go to financialcrisistalkcenter.com or thabgross.com. You can also call 888-235-HELP. You can call that number on the weekend. Uh, there's a voice. We, we have a message, and, and we can sign you up that way as well. Uh Go online to sign up, Smart Play. The seminar covers all the latest news, all the latest events. The Bank of America settlement, changes in tax laws. Michigan now is going to offer offering compromises starting in 2015. There's lots of things that are always developing. The, the approach is comprehensive, looking at all of the angles, all the options to move things forward. It's not about eliminating debt. It's about saving money. It's about getting to 75 and having more to live on than just Social Security. That's, gonna, it, that's reality. You need to be able to plan for that. I want to thank our sponsors, Gold Star Law, Samasco Law, uh, Alan Stalter, Elite REO Services, Trips uh, Auto Shop and Collision Center in, in Jackson and Lansing, and U.S. Staffing in, in Jackson and Lansing. All right, so back to what we're talking about with our rules and how we deal with our options. How do you get out of debt? How do you eliminate the debt the quickest way? I think you have to look at your options in what we've kind of talked about on the show is kind of a pecking order of analysis. Chapter 7, if you can qualify for a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, is the least costly, fastest way to get out of debt. It's a, a quick easy process, but not everybody's eligible for it. If you make too much money, you can be booted out of a Chapter 7. Not always, but typically, Chapter 7 will not become available to you. If you have too many assets, if you have a lot of equity in your home, that sometimes can deprive you of filing a Chapter 7. If you have money, like Brian will say, if you have money in your retirement account, that's not a problem. But if you've got too much money in, 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 in a savings account or too much money in equity in rental properties, sometimes that can be an impediment. Then you go to the next step. If Chapter 7 doesn't work, we look and say, well, will Chapter 13 work? And what are the benefits there? And we have a benefit sometimes. What do we do with mortgages, Brian? Well, with, with in Chapter 13, the ability to lien strip a second mortgage is, an, is the monumental benefit of Chapter 13. If your house is underwater and you owe more money on your first mortgage, than your house is worth. And that is still the case for many, many Americans. That second mortgage will be treated in a Chapter 13 bankruptcy like an unsecured credit card debt or an unsecured hospital bill or anything else that doesn't have any collateral attached to it. And in Chapter 13, the benefit of that is, is that you can pay as little as zero cents on the dollar to your unsecured creditors over the lifespan of a Chapter 13, curing your arrearage in a, on your first mortgage 
correcting the other deficiencies that you have. Maybe if you have tax issues and things like that, they can all be dealt with in the Chapter 13. And at the end of the day, that second mortgage gets nothing. So now, I want to keep going, though. So 13 can work as a good result, but sometimes a 13 isn't a good result because sometimes the person has debt. Say you got $100,000 of credit card debt, but they're making $150,000 a year. And if they were in a 13, they'd have to pay back almost the whole $100,000 over five years. That's so that true. There's a lot of reasons why a Chapter 13 might not work for somebody, including because you'd have to pay back too much money or you have... Uh, a second home that you want to keep that isn't necessarily deemed effective for a, a reorganization under Chapter 13. So we look to debt resolution instead, and we try to settle those so debts. So in debt resolution, that's where we're not in bankruptcy, but what we do is we come up with a strategy to settle the debt, particularly credit card debt, and we do it with an effective method of settling in the range of, on the low side, 20% on a credit card, up to 60%. On an average, it comes to around 38 to 42%. And then you have, you know, uh, um, and then some costs will go along with it, legal expense. Usually between legal fees and settlements, you're around 40% in total cost. It's more costly than a bankruptcy, than a Chapter 7 bankruptcy. Absolutely. But the Chapter 7 isn't always the available option. Taxes come into play as well. Sometimes you, you have an issue of tax debt. The question is, can we get rid of it with Jenny? We'll look at it and say, can you get rid of it in a bankruptcy? Uh, sometimes you can. Right. If it's a Chapter 7 and you can get rid of it and you also qualify for an offer and compromise, a lot of times we'll decide to do the Chapter 7 because offer and compromise requires that you remain compliant for the next five years. And we know for a lot of our clients that are self-employed, that's, that's very difficult to say that they're not going to end up in a situation again that... Um, they can't pay their taxes. History so, does have a tendency to repeat itself. So, yes, the, the, unfortunately it so does. the important point to wrap up this segment, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go on with, and stay on topic with the next topic, is you need to take a comprehensive look at the options in terms of laying out the best plan. What doesn't make sense is you don't want to spend $30,000 to get out of debt if you can get out of debt for $1,500 in a bankruptcy. But what you need to analyze is what is the smartest way to get out of debt in a comprehensive fashion? And you have to look at all the different options. That's what we've gained in what we've accomplished when we talk about financial crisis management. It's not just go to the bankruptcy attorney. It's not just go to the debt settlement company. It's not just go to the company to solve your tax problems. Which is the smartest play? We'll be back with the next segment of the Financial Crisis Talk Center. 